Yo, Dave Lochran here along with Ben Rasa, and we've got a bit of a unique video for you today. We've got the Odd Shopper channel, we've got the main DFS channel, and you know, they can coexist for sure when it comes to DFS betting overlap and just the overall ability to, to use one for the other and vice versa. But Ben, there's definitely a lot of differences that stand out. I sound like I'm doing an infomercial right now. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of differences that stand out, right? When it comes to betting and it comes to DFS. And most people on this channel are mostly DFS players, but we've been talking a whole lot of betting lately. And, and that's the direction a lot of things are trending for sure. So I figured it's a good time to get into a little bit of that. It's a great time. And it's one of the more common questions we get on the premium side uh, about, you know, I have this situation, I have this, do you like this for DFS? And then it also comes up like, well, what about betting? And I, I think more and more we're seeing that the research that you put in, we're going to talk about the similarities. At the end of the day, they can be a little different in terms of your conclusion. And I'm just going to bring up a couple of things, then I can throw it to you. Uh, so for me, more as a better for some of these sports, when you look at what you're doing, you have to understand with betting, you're betting against the house. It doesn't matter what you bet in terms of what I bet if we can get the same line. But in DFS, as we all know, as we've all experienced, you could have a massive night in terms of your point total. Uh, you have a great lineup. Well, if everyone else's lineup is slightly better, you lose. And if every, if your lineup is terrible and everyone's is worse, you win. You are playing against other people. So I just want to start here, Lafay. The biggest difference to me, playing versus the house, versus playing against other people, and they determine your potential payout. For sure. And, and it's funny, too, because you know you have different books where – you can shop around. That's what we have Odd Shopper for yep. in the first place that just finds the lines for you, right? When it comes to DFS, you might say, all right, you know what? This site uh, is softer than this site in terms of salaries today, so I can build lineups easier and get more good players in and build better looking lineups. But it's the same for everybody, right? So when you're playing against the house, like you were pointing out there, if you find a better line elsewhere, it's not like it's not like everybody else getting that better line uh, is not beneficial to you. It doesn't make a difference. And that's the other point of this. So if you build your lineups early in the day, uh, say in the NBA, you don't get Luca at a different price that I would get if I built right before lock. But in the betting market, it's a fluid situation. You can bet the same thing as me. If you bet it at a different time, you might get a better or worse line. So these are the things. This is why over at Odd Shopper, we have to stay diligent about the process to identify those. And then it's, I think the second part of this, we, I think most people understand two different parts of, of when you would want to maybe place a bet, but it's understanding what makes it a better bet potentially versus is this a guy I want to throw in my, you know, $5 lotto ticket, hoping to take down maybe a hundred K over on the DFS side. When it comes to, just, you know, we talk so much from a DFS standpoint about floors and, and ceilings, right? Yep. And we have all of the tools for that and whether they're going to be optimal plays in the optimal lineup, you know, all of that. And, and then range of outcomes for sure. How much of that matters from a betting standpoint? So, yeah, the, the thing about betting mostly, particularly with props, you're betting to double up say uh you know I'll, I'll use crude math so you really are just hoping to clear this and you're gonna win if you bet ten dollars you're gonna win around ten dollars and you don't care if you win by one point or a hundred and that is the difference between the dfs side and the betting side so i'm just gonna throw out an example say let's take durant right he's he comes back he's healthy blah 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 his point total his prop over 29 and a half points if he scores 30 points we're cashing that ticket. Boom. We are in the money. If he scores 40 points, we're cashing that ticket. We're in the money. If he scores 70 points, we're cashing that ticket, but we're getting the same payout. On the DFS side, if he scores 30 points in that game, maybe he pays off a salary. If he scores 70 points, he's going to be in the optimal 100% and we need to have him. So the boom bust on certain players where you know, Luffy, uh, you do NBA shows all the time, some guys are, are more that ceiling and floor style. Other guys are very, very low range of outcomes. To me, those are the guys that are probably better props because they're easily projectable versus the wild men where every point could be the difference in a GPP, but it makes no difference in the betting market. Let me ask you this. Let's say we're not just trying to double up, right? I'll give you an example that, that you and I actually spoke about not long ago. I, I was very excited about some of these Dennis Schroeder props that, that came on the board 
Uh, after we got some of that Houston news, Dennis Schroeder new in Houston in his second game played almost 40 minutes, right? 21 potential assists in, in, in that game. And it looked really good. You know, the assist prop was, was low. We, we, we cruised on that, but then there was another one that was a double double at plus nine fifty. Now I, I took a shot on that for the reason of, Hey, if he plays 40 minutes again and they don't get blown out, Dennis Schroeder, this could be an opportunity not to just double up on a prop, but actually make some good money. Now, he finished with nine and nine, only played 28 minutes because they're a bad team and they got blown out, which is always the concern, right? But when it comes to long shot bets like that, where you are kind of similar to a DFS perspective going, it's a low probability play, but here's how it could get there. There was a clear path for that to get there, right? How do you factor that into long shot betting and, and maybe parlay betting and, and all of that from a, from that standpoint? So that that's something that, again, I, I, for a lot of people watching this who are primarily DFS people, that's where this is the beauty of it. The research and the process that you're doing is not a new process. It's doing what you're already doing and looking at it. The way, What I would equate to something like that, that's more of a tournament mindset. You, you know yeah. that it's a low probability to hit, but you're seeing, OK, this is a new situation for him. The books haven't adjusted. There's a wide range of outcomes there. He could get blown out and he could be sitting on the bench. But you also thought the ceiling could be a double-double and, and you're willing to pay that. Just like you're saying, okay, I'm going to roll the dice in a tournament here. So you're doing that same process. An odd chopper has Alex and the team's projections embedded right in it. The same projections that we use on the DFS side to build our lineups, they have been tailored for the betting markets and the prop markets. And that to me is the big advantage. It's not like we have to do double the work. It's just arriving at different conclusions in terms of what might be a better bet versus what might be a better DFS play. Before we get out of here, are there any spots from DFS and betting where there is a crossover that meets in the middle to say that, you know what, these are things that could benefit you on both angles from betting and from DFS outside of just the research process? Yeah, certainly the first thing that comes to my mind is the research, like just understanding the situation, the rotations, the projections. Uh, other than that, I think it's just equating the concepts, though, of, of knowing, okay, if you play cash games, the double ups, the 50 50s, that's the equivalent of the prop bet. Though, you know, what we talked about earlier, if you're playing a, a tournament with 100,000 people, that's more equated to a, a multi leg bet, a, a parlay builder, something like that where you're trying to really thread the needle. You need a fire emoji on every position these days to cash it. In a parlay, you have to hit every leg of that bet. You can't go six and two. That's not going to get it done. So I think understanding what you're building on the betting side, just like understanding what you're building on the DFS side, uh, same process. And if you do it right, you could have the similar results. And last thing, if you are a tournament player and you're looking to get more into the betting space, maybe it just became legal in New York yep. or Louisiana, which it did. Uh, if you are one of those players, is there an appropriate way, other than using the parlay builder at Odd Shaver, but is there an appropriate way to go about being a, we'll just call it a tournament player, but really somebody that's, that's, that's betting five leg parlays and isn't really satisfied with the, you know, doubling up and just betting, you know, like even money minus 110 bets every day. So again, I think that's just understanding exactly what you're trying to do there. And the easiest DFS analogy is showdown. When we do showdown videos, we talk about telling a story. And if you are making parlays, if you are building those things, you want to create a narrative within the game or within the slate of what's going to happen. So if you do get it, all your legs are now doing the same thing, just like in showdown. So I absolutely think once again, it's taking your same process that you've been doing as a DFS player for a long time and just translating it to building parlays, to building multi-leg bets uh, and seeing if you can have that, like I said, the bink, whether you hit on the Hall of Fame uh, from the DFS side or the betting side, I guarantee it feels pretty damn good. It does. And by the way, check out all of Ben's stuff, all of our stuff yeah. for this exact same topic, all of our sports betting content over at the Odd Shopper channel. Uh, part of Awesome but it's right here on YouTube. You got oddshopper.com. It's totally free as well. And you can get Ben's insight at Jazz Raz DFS on Twitter, me at Lafay underscore D. Anything else, Ben? No, again, I think this is a topic that's going to continue to grow and grow. And that's why we wanted to be 
at the forefront because this isn't going away and there's a lot of opportunity from the dfs to the betting and from the betting to the dfs hit us with questions and comments down below we always try and read and answer all of them thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this stuff as well we'll catch you back here for the next one peace